Good morning students. Today's class is about innate immunity. Now before going to the proper topic, let's have an introduction over the overall immune system. Now next slide. Introduction. That is, what is immune system? Actually, the immune system is a remarkable versatile defense system that has evolved to protect the animals from evading pathogenic microorganisms and cancer. So, it is a defense mechanism and it is active against pathogenic microorganisms. This you all know but what you don't know that is it is again active against cancer also. Now, so what is the definition of immune system? That is the collection of cells, tissues and molecules that mediate resistance to infections and cancer is called the immune system. Now, what is immune response? The coordinated reaction of these cells and molecules to infections, microbes and cancer is called the immune response. Now, the types of immune response or immunity. That is again of two types, innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Now, I am going to the next slide that is the definition of innate immunity. What does it mean by innate immunity? Now, you must remember there are two synonyms of innate immunity. First one is natural immunity and second is native immunity. So, innate immunity or natural immunity or native immunity refers to the fact that this type of host defense is always present in a healthy individuals prepared to block the entry of microbes and to rapidly eliminate the microbes that do succeed in entering host tissues. So there are three main important things are here. First, it is present in healthy individuals. Even if whether you are exposed to any microorganisms or not, it is present in your body. And the next thing is, it first blocks the entry of microbes so that the microbe couldn't enter inside your system. And number three, if at all any microbe enters in your body, then it rapidly eliminates it. So, this three important points should be included in the definition of innate immunity. Now, going to the next slide, that is the definition of adaptive immunity. Now, adaptive immunity is the protection of a host organisms from a pathogen or toxin is mediated by B cells and T cells and characteristics by immunological memory. Adaptive immunity is highly specific to a given antigen and it is highly adaptive. Now look at the slide that I have underlined the important points here. What is the first important point? That is it is mediated by B and T cells. So B and T cells are the army for adaptive immunity. Now second point is it is characterized by immunological memory. Now, what is immunological memory? It is very important thing to understand. That is, if a pathogen enters inside your body for the first time, at first, uh, not entering, uh, when the first microbe comes in contact with your body system, what happens? At first, innate immunity gets activated and innate immunity blocks the entry of this microbe. If at all entry is done, then innate immunity will try to eliminate the microbe. But thereafter, thereafter adaptive immunity comes. Now at first adaptive immunity identifies these pathogens. Thereafter it formulates what to do and then according to the formula it acts against that, that pathogenic organisms. This is for the first attack of this pathogenic organism. If there is a subsequent second attack by this same organism, what will happen? Innate immunity will be active as in case of other cases also. Now this time adaptive immunity remembers the pathogenic organism from the before first attack. From this it has formula, ready-made formula in which uh, is applicable here. So it will mount a very potent 
and very quick and very active immunity against those microorganisms so this time the adaptive immune response is very much active very much quick and very much effective in the second time as if the adaptive immunity has memory about the previous attack of the same organism this is called the immunological memory this is very much beneficial in case of human body because if you ever have an attack of measles you are protected lifelong for this immunological memory property of adaptive immunity because in the first time the way adaptive immunity fought to the measles pathogen will be remembered for lifetime by your adaptive immunity and whenever there will be second attack of the same pathogenic organism then the adaptive immunity will be very much active and in no time it will protect you from the evading pathogens so this is the immunological memory i hope you have understood it and the next important point is the next important point is adaptive immunity is highly specific to a given antigen what does it mean it means that the way the adaptive immunity acts against measles is totally different than the way it will act against tuberculosis so it is highly specific against a given type of the pathogen and the next point is it is highly adaptive adaptive means it formulates its action according to the threat that is it is very much adaptive against a specific type of uh, antigen or the pathogen now this is the four important point you must include in the definition of adaptive immunity now going to the types of adaptive immunity first of all is humoral immunity that is antibody mediated response and the antibody secreted by which cell that is the b cell and now next is the cell mediated adaptive immunity which is done by cytotoxic t cell response now i am going to the fifth slide that is the summation slide that is the innate immunity plus adaptive immunity is equal to immune response that is when any threat comes in front of you then at first innate immunity will be active it will prevent the pathogen to enter inside your body if entry is somehow done then it will rapidly trying to eliminate the uh, evading pathogen and thereafter comes the adaptive immunity then adaptive immunity at first recognizes the pathogen thereafter it formulates what to do and thereafter according to the formula the adaptive immunity will mount an immune response and with the help of these two types of immunity the pathogen will be defeated this is the total immune response process clear now going to the next slide that is our innate immunity proper at first uh, some characteristics of innate immunity this is the seventh slide that the characteristics of innate immunity now the first point is it is the first line of defense against evading microorganism very obvious at first it blocks the entry of the microorganism so that it couldn't get entered inside your body so it is the first line of defense number 2 point is the it is present before the onset of the action infection that is in a healthy individual also have innate immunity and by this innate immunity you are prepared for the threats outside the environment that is from the outside environment there are microbes so we have to be prepared every time so that every infection when comes in front of you then your body cell must uh, give some defense mechanism for this reason innate immunity is always ready so it is present before the onset of action third point is disease resistance mechanism are not specific to a particular type of pathogen what does it mean it means that uh, it reacts somehow similar against uh, every form of organism what are the two actions can be done by this innate immunity that is at first it blocks the entry of the pathogen whatever may be the type of the pathogen 
it will blocks the entry and if entry at all done then it will rapidly trying to eliminate it so the mechanism is similar in case of every type of pathogen now number 4 point the defense during critical period just after the host exposure to a pathogen in general most of the microorganisms are encountered by a healthy individual is readily cleared within a day by the innate immunity that is it is the first line of defense most of the pathogen we encounter in our life is dealt with by innate immunity very efficiently and other they cannot enter or if enter will be rapidly eliminated within a few days by your innate immunity so it is very much effective now the fifth point is it has broad reactivity of immune system which is uniform in all member of a species what does it mean it means that in a given species all the members of the species will mount similar type of innate immunity okay now i am going to the next slide that is the continuation slide of the innate immunity characteristics here the first point is the receptor of the innate immune system are encoded in the germline and are not produced by the somatic recombination of genes this is a quite different uh, difficult point for you to understand but uh, i am trying to give you an idea it will be totally cleared uh, by the classes of adaptive immunity but but uh, for the timing i am just trying to make you understand it uh, from so far the discussion you have learned that the adaptive immunity Uh, what does it adaptive immunity do that is when the pathogen comes at first the innate immunity acts it will prevent entry or at all if entry is done it will eliminate it thereafter comes the adaptive immunity what does it do it first recognizes the pathogen thereafter it formulates what to do the adaptive immunity formulates what to do and then the adaptive immunity will mount according to the plan a strong immune response now in our life we encounters huge number of pathogens and every time adaptive immunity has to identify it and plan accordingly and to fought accordingly for this reason adaptive immunity requires huge numbers of receptors for their action and these receptors are huge in number and also different different in types also according to the type of the evading pathogens as the adaptive immunity requires huge numbers of receptors to act because you don't know which type of antigen you encounter in which phase of your life so uh, for adaptive immunity huge numbers of receptors are required now all the receptors are not always present in your body for this reason there should be a machinery which can create receptors according to need for adaptive immunity to act for this reason the adaptive immunity has a factory for manufacturing the appropriate receptors these are the somatic recombination of gene the factory is called the somatic recombination of genes but the innate immunity reaction are not so much uh, pathogen specific the innate immunity somehow reacts similar way against every organisms for this reason innate immunity needs less number of the receptors and all these less number of receptors are encoded in our germline that is in our genes for this reason innate immunity always have ready made receptors available that are encoded in the germline but adaptive immunity has to manufacture its uh, needed receptors every time so i hope uh, it's clear a little bit of clear but it will be totally cleared by the adaptive immunity classes now the next point is the innate immune system responds in the same way to repeat encounter that is no memory is present now you know uh, by the time that what is immunological memory 
and it's a characteristic of adaptive immunity but innate immunity has no immunological memory so far from the discussion of the characteristics of innate immunity you can assume that adaptive immune system responds more efficiently and specifically to each encounter with a microbe now i am going to the next slide that is the innate immunity comprises of four types of defensive barriers now first type of defensive barrier is anatomic and this is again done by skin and mucous membrane next is physiology the physiological uh, immunological barrier can be given by gut acidity urine acidity intestinal motility acute phase proteins and other proteins like peroxidase lactoferrin collectin defensin and complement system etc fourth the third is the phagocytic and fourth defense is the inflammatory now going to the next slide that is the anatomical barrier proper first of the anatomical barrier is encountered by the innate immunity is the skin now you all know the anatomy of skin the thinner outer layer is epidermis made up of tightly packed epithelial cell and a keratin layer this keratin layer is waterproof layer and there are intra epithelial lymphocytes including the beta gamma type of t cells which often recognizes to microbial lipids and other structures that are shared by the microbes of the same type so what is it that is the in the intra epithelial layer there are t cells and the type of t cell is beta gamma type of t cells these t cells recognizes the microbial lipids these lipids are foreign to our body and these foreign lipids are readily identified by the beta gamma type of t cells and these t cells will rapidly then eliminate the microbe and the number 3 point is the b1 cells are found in epithelium cell is mostly peritoneal cavity now what is the epithelium of the peritoneum cavity it is the mesothelium now in the mesothelium there is beta 1 b1 cell and this b1 cell respond to microbes and microbial toxins that pass through the wall of the intestine so if there is any microbes uh, spillage from the intestinal cavity inside the mesothelium then the mesothelial uh, cell that is b1 cell will be active against this pathogen now the next point is the thicker layer of dermis which uh, secretes the sebum and the sebum has a ph between 3 to 5 and it has lactic acid and fatty acid this ph inhibits the growth of microorganism you all know that the in the highly acidic uh, milieu the uh, pathogenic microorganism cannot grow and this dermis uh, secretes sebum for this purpose so from here you uh, can assume that if there is any breach in continuity in the skin then there will be scratches or wounds or abrasions then this will act as a route for infection to enter inside your body now uh, i am going to the next point of anatomical barrier that is the mucous membrane the conjunctiva and the alimentary tract respiratory tract urogenital tracts all are lined by mucous membrane now saliva tears and mucus secretions acts to wash away any potential evaders also they contain antibacterial and antiviral substances like defensins and cathecidins and the viscous fluid is called the mucus that is secreted by the epithelial cells of mucous membrane entraps the foreign microorganisms you all know this and in the lower respiratory tract the mucous membrane is covered by cilia the synchronous movement of the cilia tend to wash away the pathogenic organisms also non pathogenic organisms tend to colonize in the epithelial cells of the mucosal surface you call this uh, normal flora these normal bacterial floras generally outcompete the pathogens for attachment sites on the epithelial tissue surfaces and also for the necessary nutrients that is the normal bacterial fl flora that uh, you can see in the gut flora these are generally competes Uh, with the pathogenic organisms for attachment as well as nutrition so that the pathogenic organisms do not get attachment and do not get the necessary nutrients now going to the uh, next point that is the physiological barrier now coming to the first slide of the physiological barrier that is the temperature 
pH and various soluble and cell associated molecules. Now first example about the temperature that is chicken have innate immunity to the anthrax because of their high body temperature. In the high body temperature anthrax bacilli growth is uh, inhibited. For this reason chickens are immune to anthrax. Next coming to the pH that is gastric acidity, urine acidity, vaginal acidity these are the barrier for infections because the in the low pH of these areas the uh, pathogenic organisms cannot grow. Now going to the next slide that is a variety of soluble factors contribute to the innate immunity. Which are those factors? These are like lysozymes, interferons, antibody, complements, etc. Now coming to the each point. First of all is natural antibody. These are produced by sub subcell of beta uh, B cells and present before the infection recognizes common molecular pathogens. Uh, now these are mostly IgM antibodies which are active in innate immunity. Now antibody antigen have a separate class you all know detail about it. Now going to the next point that is lysozyme. This is again a hydrolytic enzyme found in mucus secretions and in tears also. These are able to cleave the peptidoglycan layer of the bacterial cell wall thereby destroy the bacteria. Now next point is interferon. These are a group of proteins produced by virus infected cell and it has ability to bind to nearby cells and induce a generalized antiviral state. Now interferon is an important uh, uh, question in the second prof MBBS uh, classes. Now for the timing just have an idea that it is secreted by virus or bacteria infected cells and these can mount the innate immunity. Now going to the next slide that is about complement and collectins. Now what is complement? This is again beyond scope of discussion in the first MBBS uh, classes because uh, in the second MBBS class you will have a detailed idea about complement. Just have a look at the uh, selected points about complement. It is a group of uh, serum protein that circulate in an inactive state. A variety of specific and non-specific immunological mechanisms can convert the inactive forms into the active form of complement. So it is a serum protein which roams in the blood in an inactive form when there is any uh, infections are there then they will get activated and the activated complement usually binds to the uh, organism causing the destruction of the organism or facilitating their clearance. So this is the action of complement. Now going to the next point that is the collecting. These surfactant proteins may kill the certain bacteria directly by disrupting their lipid membranes or facilitating the phagocytosis. Okay, So this is about collectins. Now I am going to the next slide that is the phagocytic barrier in the innate immunity. Now there are mainly uh, two type of phagocytes that are circulating in our blood that is the neutrophil and monocyte and there are some other also phagocytic cells are there which are NK cells that is neutral killer cells and dendritic cells. Okay. Now I am going to the next slide that is the phagocytosis proper. Now you all know about phagocytosis just uh, I am giving a brief idea about this phagocytosis in this slide. Phagocyte extends its plasma membrane around the recognized microbes. The membrane closes up and pinches off and the particle is internalized in a membrane bound vesicle which is called phagosome. And now the phagosome fuses with the lysosome to form phagolysosome. Now inside the phagolysosome there are several uh, mechanisms for killing the bacteria or virus that is phagocytic oxidase, nitric acid, uh, nitric oxide synthase enzyme and lysosomal proteases. These are some enzymes which helps in the destruction of the pathogens.
Now coming to the next slide, that is the cytotoxic and toxic activity in the macrophages and neutrophils. That is inside the phagolysosome, how are the uh, pathogens killed? They are killed mainly by two ways, that is the oxygen dependent killing and oxygen independent killing. Now what are the oxygen dependent killing? This is done by again reactive oxygen intermediates like superoxide anions, hydroxyl radicals, hydrogen peroxides and hypochlorite anions and uh, reactive nitrogen intermediates and some other free radicals and also by the oxygen independent killing what are the oxygen independent killing mechanism these are by the defensins and the tumor necrosis factor alpha in the macrophages lysozyme and hydrolytic enzymes so the oxygen dependent killing are by free radicals and oxygen independent killing are by proteins and uh, the enzymes so this is a brief idea about the phagocytosis that is well versed uh, with you in the physiology and the other biochemistry classes. Now so far I have described uh, the ideal phagocytic mechanism inside the neutrophils. Now you all know about neutrophil nothing to say more but uh, properly go going to the uh, monocyte part. This is very much important the monocytes are less abundant than neutrophils numbering 500 to 1000 per mil uh, cubic millimeter of the blood. They too ingest the microbes in the blood and tissue. But what is the difference between the macrophage and monocyte? This is very much important for you. Unlike neutrophils, monocytes that enter the extravascular tissues survive in the site for long period and in the tissue they differentiate into a cell which is called macrophage. So only monocyte can uh, be macrophage. Now, the next point is infectious microbes breaches the epithelium and enters the subepithelial tissue. Resident macrophages then recognizes the microbe and respond by producing soluble proteins called cytokines. So, what is that? Macrophage. The macrophage is one type of differentiated monocyte. When any pathogen enters into the epithelium or the subepithelial tissue, the macrophage also reaches there and they differentiate into the uh, macrophage. When they are residing there for a long time, they differentiate into macrophage and thereafter they produce some soluble protein called cytokines and these macrophage as well as these cytokines acts together to kill the pathogen. Now macrophage stimulates also T lymphocyte and responds to the production of the cytotoxic T cells. Thereby macrophage also helps in cell mediated type of adaptive immunity. Okay, Now here the two immunity overlaps a little bit. Monocyte acts in the phagocytic way and helps in innate immune response and also helps in mounting cell mediated immunity of adaptive immune response. Clear? Now, monocyte is a very important short note, learn it by heart. Now, I am going to the next point, that is the innate immune system recognizes the structure that are characteristics to microbial pathogen and not present in host cells. This is the way how the innate immune system recognizes the foreign pathogen. This is done by two ways that is recognizing the PAMP that is the pathogen associated molecular pattern recognition and next point is PRR that is the pattern recognition receptors. So by uh, identifying PAMP and PRR immune response recognizes that it is a foreign structure. Clear? Now this PRR the pattern recognition receptors again can be of two types cell associated and soluble cell associated the prr are again of two type surface receptor as well as the cytoplasmic receptors so these are helping in the recognition of pathogen by innate immune response okay now i am going to the Next important point that is NK cell or neutral killer cell. The full form of NK is neutral killer cell. This is a very important short note. So you must learn it by heart. Now 
द न्यूट्रल किलर सेल्स न्यूट्रल किलर सेल्स आर ए कम्पोनेंट ऑफ इनेट इम्यून सिस्टम विच डज नॉट डायरेक्टली एटैक द इविडिंग माइक्रोब्स रैदर दैन इट डिस्ट्रॉयज द कम्प्रोमाइज होस्ट सेल सच एज द ट्यूमर सेल्स और वायरस इन्फेक्टेड सेल्स दैट इज वॉट इज इट दैट इज द इन के सेल डू नॉट इनगल्फ द माइक्रोब्स रैदर दैन इट इनगल्फ द माइक्रोब्स इन्फेक्टेड सेल और ट्यूमर सेल अंडरस्टैंड अदर फैगोसाइटिक सेल्स लाइक द मोनोसाइट मैक्रोफाज एंड द न्यूट्रोफिल्स दे इनगल्फ द पैथोजेनिक बैक्टीरिया और द पैथोजेन्स बट दिस इन के सेल फैगोसाइटोज द ट्यूमर सेल्स और पैथोजेन इन्फेक्टेड सेल्स सो इन के सेल्स आर वेरी बिग सेल नाउ वट इज हैपन देन नाउ द इन के सेल ग्रैन्यूल्स हैज प्रोटीन that inclu- includes the molecules that create holes in the plasma membrane of the infected cells or other molecules that enter the infected cells and activate the enzymes and induce apoptotic cell death now what does it mean by the second point now inside the nk cell there is a phagolysosome which contains the tumor cells or virus infected cells now you have to uh, do something for this uh, 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 virus infected cell or tumor cell inside the phagolysosome that is you have to kill the contents inside the phagolysosome how did occurs it occurs by two ways first of all there are some protein molecules in the nk cell which creates hole in the plasma membrane of the infected cells when the infected cells of the plasma membrane becomes leaky and thereafter the cell is destroyed inside the lysosome or there is another way of cell destruction inside the phagolysosome of the nk cell what is it that is inside the nk cell the diseased uh, uh, or the uh, virus infected or the tumor cells are died by induced apoptosis apoptosis that is the programmed cell death you all know that is inside the phagolysosome the uh, defective cells that is the virus infected or tumor cells dies by the apoptotic pathway now the next point the nk cells synthesize and secrete the cytokines which activates the macrophage to become more active at killing the phagocytos microbes so nk cell not only kills the uh, virus infected cells or tumor cells cells it also secretes cytokines to help other macrophages to become more and more phagocytic more and more efficient phagocytic cells now going to the next point that is the dendritic cell it is again an important short note now what is dendritic cell now it is phagocytic cell i have said before now it is circulated in our blood in an immature form when it get matures when the body is encountered by a pathogen now when a pathogen enters inside your body the dendritic cells have prr or the pattern recognition receptors with the help of this receptors dendritic cells identifies the bacteria and the bacteria or the virus or the evading microorganisms now the microorganisms attach with the dendritic cells with the help of prr in the dendritic cells and now these dendritic cells are activated now this activated dendritic cells secretes the cytokines and thereafter what happens these virus infected dendritic cells that is activated dendritic cells migrates into the lymphocytes and there it is fully matured once matured they are antigen presenting cells for t cell stimulation that is in a nutshell you can say that this mature dendritic cells helps in cytotoxic t cell stimulation in adaptive immunity so there is two sides of overlap of innate immunity as well as adaptive immunity the two side is nk cells and dendritic cells this nk cells also helps in 
the uh, adaptive immunity and dendritic cells also though they are part of innate immunity but helps in action of the adaptive immunity now clear now going to the next point that is the inflammation inflammation is again a protective uh, thing for the immune response okay now what is inflammation now actually inflammation is also a uh, topic for the second prof uh, students but here i am giving just an idea uh, that is it's a tissue damage called by any wound or any evading pathogenic microorganisms that induces a complex sequence of event that is collectively known as inflammatory responses so when there is a wound or a, there is a pathogenic microorganism evasion then your body will mount an immune response now uh, the immune response here is the inflammatory response now what is the cardinal sign for the inflammations these are vasodilatation increase in capillary permeability and influx of phagocytic cells from the capillaries now now this is uh, the in short about inflammation and uh, in the next slide you can have a pictorial demonstration of the inflammation now this is uh, written in your books also nothing to mention more now i am going to the next slide here there is a symmetric diagram showing the innate and adaptive immunity in a nutshell now look at the picture now uh, you can see in the left side there is a microbes entering in our body at first it's, it is encountered by innate immunity innate immunity is trying to uh, bar it from entering if at all entered then the phagocytic cells comes and phagocyte phagocytic activity is uh, shown by the innate immunity and thereafter they also secrete the complements to uh, destroy the pathogen now what happens uh, adaptive immunity comes now what the adaptive immunity does that is through the b lymphocyte it secretes the antibody which kills the uh, antigens or the evading pathogens or they somehow activates the t lymphocytes with the help of again nk cell and dendritic cell of the innate immune response you have learned so far that is the nk cell and dendritic cell also helps in the t lymphocytic action now somehow this t lymphocytes belongs to the adaptive immune response that is cytotoxic t cells the cytotoxic t cells again kills the bacteria so uh you can see that the innate immune response occurs within hours but the adaptive immune response occurs within days so it is a slow process adaptive immunity is a slow process process and innate immunity is a fast process now i am going to the next slide that is a comparison between innate immunity and adaptive immunity now look at the comparisons first is innate immunity is native or natural immunity present at birth and the adaptive immunity is acquired when the pathogen enters inside your body then your body prepares and uh, formulates and according to the formula adaptive immunity uh, or adaptive immune response is shown to the pathogen so it is acquired now second point uh, the innate immunity in case of innate immunity all the receptors are germline encoded and the adaptive immunity the receptors are produced by somatic recombination of genes now the third point is the uh, innate immunity presents before the infection is present in your body but the adaptive immunity develops in response to an infection now innate immunity number 4 point the innate immunity is initial response to a pathogen but adaptive immunity is a delayed response now number 5 innate immunity has broad specificity it acts in the similar way against every organisms but the adaptive immunity is exquisitely specific it is totally specific for each types of pathogens and the innate immunity has no memory but the adaptive immunity has immunological memory these are the important comparison between innate immunity and adaptive immunity now this topic is very much difficult i think for at the time at your age but uh, it is a new entry in the mbbs curriculum for first prof mbbs the immunology and uh, so i am uh, giving a short idea 
about the innate immunity and the introduction of the immune responses now there will be next class about immunity thank you so far for your kind attention